Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a whole together a whole series of videos aimed at strategies you can use to unload or take the load off your working memory. So I want to start off that series by looking at what your working memory actually is and why we might want to do that. Because the things I'm going to be suggesting you do are all things that require some effort input into them. And the, the, I think a fair question is, well, what am I getting in return for that? So what I'm going to talk about in this video specifically is what your working memory actually is, how much working memory you actually have, and what we can think about doing to free up more space in that. Because physics is a very demanding subject on your working memory, and the more space we can free up in it, the better off you're going to be in terms of doing physics. So that, that's what we'll approach. First of all, I want to talk about what working memory actually is and try and explain to you when you may have previously experienced issues with your working memory. So the, the way you will most know you have, you're having working memory issues or you've gone over your capacity is something we call overload. So if you're studying physics, you will come across this quite a lot. This is something that crops up quite a lot uh, during you're going through the process of learning. So Essentially, what it will be is you're trying to mentally handle lots of things at once and you feel completely overwhelmed and you feel like you just can't process. You've been given too much information and you're like, oh, my God, I'm completely overloaded here. That's where this usually will affect you. So what's actually going on here? The way to think about your working memory is it's the number of things you can be juggling in your brain at the same time. So there is a physical limit to the number of things that you can process and juggle in your brain at once. So I imagine your brain is just juggling things. And as you're given a piece of information, it takes up a slot or it forms one of these balls that you're trying to juggle. And if you get given lots of information uh, at the same time, you're trying to juggle more and more and more balls. And if you're trying to do some reasoning with that, that takes up, that's another ball. If you're trying to do some problem solving, that's another ball. And overload is just when you've got to the point where you just can't juggle that amount. So if you imagine you're actually trying to juggle, eventually, if you're like me, if you try and do four, um, I can't do that, but I can handle three. So as soon as I try and introduce that fourth, the fifth, the sixth thing, I just can't handle that anymore. I just drop everything and we're completely overloaded. Okay, so. That's how we're affected by working memory. So, how big is your working memory? How many things can you juggle at once? Well, it varies by your age. So depending on how old you are, your working memory on average will be a different size. And I've just sketched a graph to show generally what this looks like over time. So you can see that um, if I, I'm a secondary school teacher, so I generally will start dealing with people here. So uh, when you come in in year seven, age 11, you can probably handle up five towards the end of school. So once you're at sixth form, we can increase that. So maybe you've got one more. And once you're going into university and beyond, maybe that goes up as much as seven. Uh, depressing information for me is I am here. So in exciting news, I'm at the peak of my abilities. Uh, in sad news, you can see the decline is on the way. Um, so uh, I basically need to be maximizing my use of this at the moment. But that aside, anyway, so this is how many haps. So then what this tells you is how many items you can simultaneously juggle at once. So for me, for me, that's about seven. So what that means is you can give me about seven pieces of new information and I might just about be able to retain them. If you want me to do something with that information, you can probably give me four and then I might be able to do some my own multiplication and addition, something like that to them. Um, but essentially that it's a limit to how much I can do. OK, so it's something to be mindful of when you're learning um, and not to try and overload yourself. OK, so that's. So. Um, this isn't a hard and fast rule for everyone. This is an average. So generally speaking, these numbers are given with an uncertainty of two. So when you're age 10, it says your capacity will be five, but it could be as high as seven. It could be as low as three. And that depends on the person. Um, so it, here up at seven, um, I could be as high as nine or it could be as low as five. I definitely don't think I'm anywhere near as high as nine. I, I would say seven is about right? Maybe even six for me is the amount of information I can handle simultaneously. Um, it's about knowing yourself and realizing as, and there's all sorts of tests you can do online to find out what yours is if you really want to know. 
So, what in terms of improving our use of working up memory, or what I mean by that is um, freeing up space, because there's not really anything you can do about increasing the number of slots other than getting older. OK, so loads of stuff online will tell you you can train your brain to increase your working memory. That's absolute nonsense. You can't. You're, what, you're stuck with the equipment you've got. OK, but what, so what we need to do is actually make better use of it. We need to use it more intelligently. So things that might be needlessly taking up working memory spaces, making your learning harder. Um, the worst one these days is social media. So if you're sitting there flicking through Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever the current one is when you're watching this, um, that will taking up that will be taking up slots in your working memory that you can't use to then actually do things which are useful. Um, so put that in the bin straight away. If you're listening to music, that paying attention to that takes up slots in your working memory. Again, it's going to be have a negative effect on what you're doing. If you're You've got family around that are being noisy. You're sitting next to a person that smells really bad. Um, those are going to be taking up slots in your working memory because you're paying attention to the fact that that's going on. Those things are all going to be invading your working memory, taking up slots which you could be using for something else. And so it's basically limiting your ability to handle new information. OK, so that's a basic things that we can do. So. To give an example, so if you're 12 years old, so you have a capacity of about five items, you're chatting on your phone and you're listening up to, listening to music, that's probably taking up two spaces in your working memory, giving you only three spaces left for learning. So you've reduced your capacity by 40% for no really good reason. Okay, so one thing that we can do to actually help with this or take the burden off our working memory is we can get some of our skills to the point where they're automatic. And what we mean by that is that those skills don't require any real thought from us and therefore they're not taking up any space in working memory. And I'm going to show you some things that it will be useful in physics for you to automate. And the way we achieve that is by repeating the same process over time. And I'm going to make a couple of different videos where I can show you how we go about doing this. So that's one thing we can do with a skill or a process. We can make it automatic. OK, so. Things in physics that it might be very useful to automate. We're going to look at how we can automate rearranging equations. So getting it to a point where we don't have to think when we're doing it. We can just do it on autopilot. We might want to convert units automatically. Again, something that could be taking up space in our working memory, but we can automate that, get it, so we can just do it without thinking. Final thing that's useful to have on autopilot is the process we use to extract information from questions. Again, if we can automate that, that will take the load off our memory. That will free us up for problem solving and things. So we'll look at automating each of those three things in future videos. So the other thing you can use to help support your working memory is your long term memory, which is a different memory structure. And I'm not going to go into too much into what, how they're different or whatever. So if you can transfer knowledge into your working memory, it, so into your long term memory, it doesn't take up space in your working memory. So if you know something it's in your long term memory, you can use that piece of information without it taking up a working memory slot, which is um, really good. So how do we put something in long term memory? Again, I'm going to make a video about this, but essentially what the way we achieve that is by repeatedly taking things out of our memory over a long period of time, then they'll become a strong fixed long term memory. And I'll go into that in more detail. Useful things to have in your long term memory in physics, uh, your equations. Um, I often will have a large number of arguments with students about this because they're like, oh, I've got an equation sheet. I don't need to learn these. Uh, trust me, you'll be helping yourself out a lot if you have these in your long term memory. You'll take a massive load off your working memory with them. So it's a very good idea, even if you are giving them to you. The units that things have, again, every quantity in physics has a unit, you know, newtons, meters, time. If you just have those in your long term memory, you don't need to think about them. That's a great thing to have. Final thing it's good to have in your brain would be the laws of physics. So uh, things like Newton's laws, conservation of energy, all of those conservation of momentum, all those different things that get used across the board in physics are a great thing to have in your long term memory. Again, 
so they don't take up slots in your working memory when you're trying to actually do stuff. Okay, that's a very brief introduction in terms of the objective I'm trying to work towards in these next series of videos. What we're trying to do is free up more space for you in your working memory so you can make maximum use of what you've got at this moment in time. Okay.